a beautiful start to the day, a very special day at this world famous Gold Coast. Hello and welcome to the 40th edition of the Gold Coast Marathon. Joining me in commentary, four-time Olympian and gold, silver and bronze medalist in the Commonwealth Games Marathon, Steve Monaghetti and Mona. When you see the sunrise, if that's a symbol of today, we're in for a cracker. We are, James. Great to be along with you. 40th anniversary, a bit of a history lesson, but also a beautiful atmosphere. Always a great anticipation in this event. Gold Coast Marathon began way back in 1979 with only 124 runners. This year, nearly 7,000. Let's hear from some of them now. Yeah, so it's a good place to come. Friends, party, family. It's a great little mini vacation. Go to the Melbourne's uh, winter weather. You know, five degrees, six degrees, so this is bliss. It's my time out. <laughs> it makes me feel good. And I'm very proud of what I've done in my training. Oh, very great. We are ready to go. <laughs> ready! <laughs> yeah, we are ready. <laughs> this is the 20th one here. Daughter's done three, or two. And Grant's coming back next year already, aren't you, mate? Oh, I just... Yeah, I, yeah, 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 coming back next year. And we love it. it. Absolutely For the fun, of course. It. Bit of a nudge there, Mona. Well, when you look at it, as I said, it started way back in 1979 with only 124 runners, and now it's grown into a truly international event, an IAAF gold label event. It is a terrific, terrific marathon. It is, and obviously we, uh, you know, you have all shapes and sizes. So we see our wheelies getting away there, and just the the stories that come out of this event, the training and the preparation, but the camaraderie that will develop on the day, and you know, people will just come to this event as a as a catch up from from year to year, and that history is something we should recognise and acknowledge. And we see the start line there, defending champion from Japan, Takuya Noguchi, and look at this man. He's won it twice, second last year behind. Noguchi, Kenneth Mungara from Kenya. This is going to be a very, very good race. I can feel it. You sense it. You know, a bit of uh, retribution for Kenneth after being beaten in that sprint finish last year. So we'll see what happens out there today. But he'll want to get back. He only finishes in one place, and that's on the top of the dais. 6,712 runners in the Gold Coast Marathon about 50 countries represented. Who will stand alone at the end of the day? We'll find out very, very soon. And most importantly, it's not only about the elite runners, but this really reflects the community of running with all sorts of shapes and sizes and dreams. As we can see the elite runners in the bottom left making their way towards Sundale Bridge. Let's have a look at the course. They head south for the first 16 kilometres, then a turnaround at Burley Heads, and then they make their way north. The course is flat and fast and very, very spectacular. To the northernmost point, Runaway Bay from there, it's a sprint, if you can still sprint after a marathon. Who will stand alone at the end of this race? Certainly looking for fast times out there today course record set by one of the runners out there today, Kenneth Mungara, 208.42. And when you look at some of his competition, it really is the Japanese who are going to stake the big claim. Noguchi won last year, and we see in this lead group, we've got paces, so the first few runners are the paces, but in this group of about 20, we do have the main runners. We've got Kawauchi, we've got Noguchi, and we've got Kenneth Mungara. We have, and I just noticed a little bit of uh, water on the road there so we did have a little bit I was driving out so a little bit of rain as I was approaching but I think that'll clear now but it, it means you know maybe just a little bit slippery surface and maybe a little bit of high humidity I just sensed that a little bit um, so I wonder if that'll have an impact on this early pace. So what are the runners thinking right now? Well, they're, they're wanting, getting, wanting to get into their work, and that's where it's great having the paces, James. They just set the pace. They, everyone in this group knows that that's their job and, and the pace that they will have discussed in, uh, in the technical meeting what times they're going to go at. So all they need to do is just sit in. And what they're hoping is today's their day. You can, you can do all the preparation you like, but marathons, you know, you're out there and sometimes you have a good day, some day, days are not so good, and you just hope in this early stage, is, oh, yeah, it's looking like today's going to be a good day. And if you did have a minor niggle, now is when it, it'll either go away or it'll exaggerate and it'll become a problem. To the lead women's, and we have a group of four headed by two Kenyans. Never has a Kenyan woman won the Gold Coast Marathon and the top two seeds this year are Agnes Barsocio and Ruth Chebatok running side by side. So they're the ones to watch. Over their shoulders is Australian Jess Trengove. 
third in the Commonwealth Games Marathon at the Gold Coast this year and Ayuka Fujimoto from Japan. Spectacular sights here at the Gold Coast for the 40th edition of the Gold Coast Marathon and the men's group approaching the five kilometre mark. It's a big group. It's a huge group and a lot of Japanese runners as well. Uh, you know, they're, if you think about the Kenyans dominating world men's marathon running, I tell you, the Japanese have a, not only great history, but real depth. And there we see in the centre of shot there, running in the cap, Yuki Kawauchi. And what a story he is. They call him the citizen runner in Japan, and he surprised many this year by winning the prestigious Boston Marathon. He did. He's, he's an incredible athlete. And those legs, I feel sorry for those legs because <laughs> they have done an enormous amount of work, but it doesn't seem to affect him. And, you know, his, his results here, he's, he's always on the podium or not far from it. So... Yeah, gee, expect him to be prominent. Absolute superstar. And I was reading about him. The race, his warm-up for that race was a half marathon back in Japan where he won uh, running in a panda suit. Oh, really? Right, OK. Well, we can see right at the front of the shot, Douglas Kispani Chebai and Victor Chipchir, two Kenyans running among the paces. And Mona, what's interesting is the different running styles. Looking at that earlier shot, the lean. Here we are again, the lean of the Kenyan runners. Is that specific to the Kenyans? Oh, not necessarily. They they do tend to lean a little bit more, but um, and you'll see the Japanese are normally more compact. And that's, um, oh, yeah, it's just, that's the way it is. Yeah, I'm, I haven't really, no, it certainly doesn't affect them. I don't mind a little bit of a lean because it tends to allow your legs to come through a bit smoother. So. Most um, distance runners would have a little bit of a forward lean, but um, no, it's all, there's no real right or wrong technique. As long as you're efficient and you're conserving your energy, then, then that'll, that'll be OK. Early days, but they're running at three minutes per kilometre at the moment. That's the pace that they've been set. So two hours, eight minutes and 16 seconds is about 302 kilometre pace, or 20 kilometres an hour, basically. So they're not jogging. Don't, don't be under any misapprehension that these guys are just going out for a Sunday morning run. They are rolling along, and, and you almost can see that in... We're getting lit, little bits of packs forming, and whilst we do have a big pack, they are starting to just segregate a little bit now, which means the pace is probably on. There we, you go, spot on. Three-minute Ks, you're, you're right, James. Ruth Chepatok and Agnes Barsocio leading the way in the women's a small group surrounded by a few male runners. Among them are the pace setters. Chepatok has a best time winning the Barcelona Marathon earlier in 2018, 2.25.49, but the clear number one seed is Barsocio, just on the further edge of the screen there, and her time PB, 2.20.59, so she really is the one to beat. But I tell you, Jess Tringove and... Uh She's coming off a really good result, Com Games, but she is such a consistent marathon runner. She is arguably one of the best Australian female marathon runners of all time. And no Australian marathon runner has won the women's event at the Gold Coast Marathon since 2009 when Lauren Shelley won in 2.42.22. Of course, you don't have to come to the Gold Coast to run a marathon or be part of the Fun Running Festival. There is something for everyone. From horse racing to motor racing to the culture, the Gold Coast has really cemented itself on the world travel map as a premier destination and at the heart of it all is spectacular coastline, some of the most incredible coastline across the world. So come and visit the Gold Coast as these runners do yesterday.
The day before the marathon, we had the Southern Cross University 10K, part of a number of events, eight runs in all, making this a grand festival. And at the end of it, it was 24-year-old runner Jordan Guzman. He said he talked it up early. He said he was going to beat the race record, and he did. The race record held by two-time Commonwealth Games gold medal marathon runner Michael Shelley. Uh, yeah, he's gone on to great things, and if I could even be half of what he is, then I'd be really satisfied. And Madeline Hills, certainly satisfied in the women's. Uh, it was really good. Um, always a beautiful morning here on the Gold Coast for the 10K. Um, had a slightly unorthodox race plan today. I, um, a few of the boys on the start line knew I was planning to really run a five, 5K hard, take a little break and, and jog it in. Run 5Ks hard and jog it in. I'd like to be able to do that, of course. There are runs for everyone at the Gold Coast Marathon. We've got the Gold Coast Airport 5.7k fun run. And on top of that, there are runs for the kiddies as well. The Garmin Junior dashes over 4k's and 2 kilometres. Who's to say in another 15 years from now, some of those boys and girls waving at the cameras may be standing atop some very prestigious daises. They could be right here in this lead pack, imagine that. Early days, Mona, but we've got a slight split in the men's and still this is where a lot of the interest is. They've got their own pacer at the front here as well, but we've got the Japanese, we've got the Kenyan runners here as well. And we see them go through 13k, so I'm not too worried that, that maybe uh, they're happy with this pace. This is where the, the, the main favourites are, so this is the pack to be in and still a pretty uh, big pack there, so travelling along nicely. Kawauchi, earlier he was right at the front, now he's, he's tossed his cap and he's at the back. Noguchi, who won last year, is there. Kenneth Mungara, who 2015 he won, 2016 he won, 2017 he came second. What will he do this year? 44 years of age. Incredible, the, the story, the Kenyan barber who was cutting hair and decided <laughs> he could do that and, and he sure has done it. He's been shaving times off. Uh, seconds off his time and he holds a world record for the, uh, the Masters uh, level, over 40 marathon time. I'm not surprised running in 28.42, you would hope you'd hold a world record, but it's a great story and you may not see him, he doesn't tend to run all that aggressively early, so he'll just sit in the pack I think and let the Japanese uh, and the Pacers do their job. The race record in the women's at the Gold Coast Marathon was set last year by Ethiopian Ababa Bakili, 2.25.34 and early days of this race, but we are under race record pace. And that's it again, the pace is here. Uh, we see a couple of the men running the pace here at around 2.25 pace. That's the, the word on the street. So they look like they're on the money there and a nice competent pack there. Very good thing to say on the money, particularly for the Australian runner, Jess Trengove, because as part of the 40th edition, there's a $40,000 bonus for any Australian runner who does under 2.28, in the women's and 2.10 in the men's. In the men's, it's not realistically going to happen, but Jess Trengove could be running towards a very big payday. Ruth Chebatok leading the way if this is the way it stays in the women's race. In the last eight years, we've had six Japanese winners, two Ethiopian winners, so we could be on the cusp of something a little different. They are running fast, so we don't want to call it early, but certainly looks like uh, certainly a Kenyan and Australian female uh, lead and, and maybe a winner, but it's early days yet, James. At the Burley Heads turnaround, they've now clocked over around 16 kilometres, so now they head back, and one of the great things about the Gold Coast Marathon, it really is a race. The elite runners and the back of the packers all run the same course, so a bit later on we'll see the elite guys running past the everyday runners, and what a spur that is. And that is one of the great things about this event, having been in it and paced a few myself, you really get a lift and you get an appreciation for how fast the, the lead runners are going as well and there's real camaraderie and a lot of the runners will move to the middle of the road just to cheer them on and just to feel a part of that um, speed maybe and gain a little bit catch a, capture a bit of that speed from the lead runners a lot of crowd throughout the course so well done for everyone getting out early of course the volunteers throughout as well make this a real community event and look who's coming the other way mona there they are, there's the women's lead group, so they're not that far behind and they're obviously moving well and we mentioned they're, they're on pretty fast pace and it certainly uh, it looks like it when they're not that far behind the men. 
when you're running in a pack like this as the elite women and you've got the paces and other competitors around you, do you well, you saw it there, Chebatok looking over her shoulder. Are you aware of the other runners? And she does it again. Are you aware of the other runners or are you still in your own space? Oh, no, you're feeling the, the pace and who's around you. You get a sixth sense for how other people are travelling. It's a really good question because I don't like having people around me generally, yeah. but you want people around you because it, it makes the race go a bit more smoothly. So I like kind of being out on the side but in a group just so you get a bit of cover. Do you run in the moment or are you always thinking ahead that okay if I'm feeling good at the 25k mark this is where I'm going to make my move or if I'm not feeling go so good I'm going to ease off a bit? It's a bit of both and you, you are, you're running in the moment because you, when you're running at this pace you have to concentrate you know you've got to worry about the drink stations as we just saw but you're also conscious of okay what point of the race are we? a significant moment like this where we've reached the southernmost point and we're starting to turn and head back these things are in the back of your mind and you just want to execute your race plan that you're prepared for uh, in the days leading days or months leading in They've just gone around the Burley Heads turnaround, the southernmost point of this course at the Gold Coast Marathon. Two Kenyans leading the way, Australia's Jess Trengove in the pack in third. As we look at the aerial pictures, as the lead men are pushing back towards Mermaid Beach, and still we have the group of three, Chip Cheer, Chebby and the Pacer out in front. It's interesting, you know, I, I think um, a little bit aggressive. I, I'm really just happy with that, that second pack. They're not, they're not off the pace. They're just sitting back nicely there in, in a good group. So I've got no concerns about the pace. I think they're still rolling along nicely. But pace is doing a good job. Not an easy job. They've got to set a pace and you want to be within a couple of seconds each kilometre. I think they went through 20k there. So, you know, we'll get an idea of what the pace is like at this early stage. It looks like they're keeping uh, rolling for sure just under 61 minutes for the first 20 k so they're running right on 303 pace we can tell you there is one prominent name who is no longer in that pack and that is boston marathon champion from this year yuki kawauchi he's dropped back off the pace well that is a, that is a real surprise that uh, he's so consistent that he's obviously having a bad day and hopefully he can run through that bad section he might get back on but no, i just think he's probably not having such a good day today and this is one of the beauties of Marathon. Look at all the runners going the other way. We touched on it earlier. Could you imagine playing the same game on Super Bowl day on the Super Bowl field or running the Melbourne Cup at Flemington? You've got all these wonderful events which are restricted for the elite people. But here we see everyday runners running the same course with the very best in the world. It's one of my great uh, selling points. One of the things I love about distance running is we all do the marathon today. We all run 42,195 metres. Some do it a little bit quicker than others, but we all certainly enjoy the challenge that only the marathon provides. This is a, a terrific race, and there we see Brad Croker pacing, just looking at his watch, making sure that they're on the pace, and this is a really good pack. No, not a lot of changes here, so it suggests that these three are quite happy rolling along with the men here. And Not all of these men are pacemaking, they're, they're, they're running out there trying to run personal best as well, and they know the women will run consistently, so it's always a good group to be in. And when you look at their paces, it is noticeable that Chebatok, a few times we've seen her, she has checked her watch, so she's really running for the time. If she keeps up this pace, she'll go under that. The race record, 225.34, so this is really something to look out for in the back stages of this race. As we look at some of the other grand events that are on as part of the Gold Coast Marathon, earlier today we had the running 
with 10,000 runners, would you believe it, in the Essex Half Marathon. Now it came down for a race in two between Australia's Jack Rayner and 2009 Gold Coast Marathon champion Willie Chabor. Rayner took the honours in a time of 1.03.12. 22 years of age, Rayner, so he's on the up in his sport. Oh, a lot. It's probably one of my biggest wins to date, I'd say, yeah, if not the biggest, but yeah. Yeah, it means, it means a lot. And a familiar face winning the women's half marathon, Sarah Hall from America, 69.27. I love this place. This is one of my favourite events ever. And uh, even though I did a marathon five weeks ago, I wanted to keep going just to get here. I love the Gold Coast and I hope to be back again. Running under 70 minutes for the half marathon, uh, that's really good range. Jack Rayner on the up and running really well. A bit of future of Australian distance running right there. Oh gee, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't like to be running in a suit <laughs> like that, would you? No, well, you get some attention and support out on the course, I think, if nothing else. Back to the lead men. We're approaching about the 25 kilometre mark and we get our first look over the shoulder of the pacer of Kento Moriyama from Japan. And to be honest, I don't know much about him, Honor. No, he's a 2.16 marathon runner, but he has a sub-61 half. He's a 2.09 marathon runner, potentially off that half marathon time. So he's not in unknown territory. He just hasn't been able to finish off the marathon. So, um, yeah, he's certainly got the speed, but we'll see if he's got the endurance today. Well, he's certainly pushing it among the leaders at the moment. Still in the group, Noguchi, last year's winner, and two-time winner, Kenneth Mungara, second from the back of that field. He saves his work for the business end, and he just sits in, gets a carry for as long as he can, and that's smart running. No changes in the women's as we head back through Broad Beach. It is Ruth Chebatok leading fellow Kenyan Agnes Barsocio. Still in the pack just a shoulder or two back is Australia's Jess Trengove. And the lead men's pack is slowly starting to dwindle. What have we? We've got two, three, four, five, six, about less than ten runners here. So rest assured the winner will come from this group. You would assume so, James. It's a big enough pack that um, you know I'm sure no one's going to run through. They'll keep the pace going because there is so many of them in this pack. And you know, I'm, like you, I think this is where our winner will eventually come. There we go. So we're through 25k, 76.19. So they are on 304k pace. So they are still in the mid 208. So they're still on race record pace through 25k. And there's a big enough pack there to suggest that we could be seeing another race record today. And interestingly, we've seen one of the paces drop out at the 25k mark, so they're on their, they're, they're lonesome now, they're on a loan, it's up to the runners. Well, it is a race now, and you know, you can have paces who set the pace all you like, but at the end of the day, you know, it is a, it is a marathon race. And so I, I love this part of the race because we see who is traveling well, because if you're struggling now and the paces have dropped off, then you're going to be one of the ones who will be struggling and that um, you'll be off the back. So, you know, these three Japanese look pretty good up the front. So they've got their drinks. Notice they've got the big all adornment of their drinks yeah. just so that they can identify them because they're coming through the drink stations so quickly you don't have a lot of time to pick your drink out and you don't want to miss it because it's quite important to get fluids on board as we know. Back to the women's, no change, Chebatok pass socio, but we do see a bit of a gap back to third. It's probably about 10 strides or so in third place. It's Jess Trengove. What can we read into that? Hopefully Jess is just feeling that the pace may be a little bit quick, but you certainly don't want to drop off, and that you know that's worrying signs there. She looks like she's thinking, no, I can't quite hold that pace. And if they're running 225, I can understand why she's you know a couple of minutes in PB territory. So you don't want to be running in isolation like that, though. That's certainly harder than in a group.
talking about running in isolation, we have a man who's going out on his own. It is 25-year-old Kento Moriyama from Japan, and he is really putting his foot flat to the floor, Mona. He looks great, and he's got that drink. He's obviously travelling pretty well, and, and yeah, he certainly... Um, we said that there was going to be an injection of pace, and he looks great. He's really put the uh, pedal to the metal, and this will test this group now. We're seeing them start to be not a group it, they're almost in single file so we'll see who's in good shape and can respond muriyama's pb for the marathon 2 16 58 so he's running well ahead of his pb and back in the field all shapes and sizes making their way at various points along the gold coast marathon course high fives for some smiles for all this really is for some of them it is a lifelong achievement to get to the other end and that's right the marathon was sold out today so massive numbers here on the gold coast and again a, a very fast and uh, well supported course Nearly 7,000 runners in the Gold Coast Marathon and it's Japan's Kenta Moriyama as we're pushing back towards the 30 kilometre mark. We can see the Sundale Bridge in the background and he's looking over his shoulder as here comes the familiar stride of 44-year-old Kenyan two times winner at the Gold Coast Marathon, Kenneth Mungara. No surprises there. I told you he does his business. So he's obviously checked that move and said, uh, hey, no, we don't want to let Moriyama go. And... I don't know if he'd be familiar with him, but he's certainly uh, competent enough to know if someone's making a break at, at this stage of the race, you need to check that. He looks great. Doesn't he? He just looks so easy. So smooth. And I love, you know, you look at the head, the shoulder um, movement, the uh, up and down movement. He's got hardly any. He's just really efficient across the ground. And this is a, this is a, that's a pretty interesting move. There's certainly down to to two here they've made a, a significant break away and we talk about that leash that leash is almost broken there you know i normally say 10 or 15 meters and i reckon that we're seeing it in a long shot but i think that's probably broken that leash how much of it now is a battle of the mind you're feeling good and you've got someone on your shoulder you've won this race before is it a case of come on catch me if you can it is a little bit and his experience over this course course kenneth he knows this so well that uh, you know it's now a challenge for this back group to see can they respond because they know he's won it a couple of times before they might not know I know the Japanese would know Mariama but maybe the other runners there wouldn't so do they check do they wait you know do they think this moves too early or not this is where it is so much of a mind game they're happy in their pack and then you see Kenneth gee they look great Kenneth and Mariama look fantastic running through there running through there we go through 30k checking the watch and they'll know that they're running at at a pace that could be a race record again. Well, it certainly is familiar territory for Kenneth Magara, two-time winner of this event, and last year second when he was in a sprint finish with Japan's Noguchi, and Noguchi is still in the pack. So we could see history repeating itself, who's to say? But as we go just past the 30-kilometre mark, it is Mongara and Muriyama who are setting the pace. And there, this is the significant part of this course. There's only one hill on the course yeah. and it comes right past us here at the 31 kilometre mark. You go up a slight hill and then down the other side. And we've seen the breakaway that's ended up being the winner of the event take place here. And it looks like we're seeing history again here. You notice Kenneth just looking over his shoulder. He's checking who has responded to that move. Has Noguchi come with him? Because he'd be thinking, well, he out sprinted me last year. I don't want that situation happening, in, happening again. But he does have another Japanese compatriot there uh, who I'm not sure he would know. If he's a 216 marathon runner, he probably wouldn't know that much about him, James. He's looking over his shoulder going, who are you? What are you doing here? This is my territory. This is my domain. I'm the king. That's right, but I can tell you, if he's there at 32 kilometres, you respect him. That's what you do, and Kenneth will be well aware of that. And there is Noguchi, last year's winner, on the left of frame, running in the gloves, also in that group, Joe Fukuda, Gite from Kenya, and Ryu Takaku from Japan. So interesting, we've got uh, four Japanese, two Kenyans. That's, it's, I mean, they're closing that down. That's not, that's certainly not a... A decisive break when I talk about I said that leash was was broken but I, I think it's just reconnected because that's certainly it looks it's almost two two and two which is interesting don't see that very often and as the Gold Coast Marathon enters the business end the wheelchair marathon is done congratulations to US Paralympian Josh George and Australia's Madison de Rosario
You're never really alone, I guess, because all the spectators are there, and then even the marathoners, once you hit the switch back and come back, I swear the, the runners were cheering just as loud as the spectators on the side of the road, so that was fun. And it was a lot of fun, but also the vibe, honestly, is unlike anywhere else I've ever raced. It's, it's so great to come up here and race on the roads. Madison, she's just a superstar at the moment. Uh, Com Games, gold, 1500 marathon, London marathon winner, and just unbeatable. Ruth Tebatok still leading the way in the women's. We're down to a group of two. Agnes Barsocio, we're under race record time. Jess Trengove, she's dropped a little bit back, but she's hanging there. How hard is it to be running by yourself in this situation? Well, I didn't see her at the back of that sh original shot, so and, and she looks like she's just working hard. I mean, she's not, she hasn't lost her form, but she certainly looks like she's struggling a little bit more than the Kenyan girls. She finished third at the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast earlier this year in the marathon. Her PB, 2.27.01, set in London last year, 2017. So she knows how to get up there and she's running under her PB time, which is good to see as we head back to the men. And the gap has lengthened again. It's Moriyama and Mungara. Well, there's certainly two now. It's a race in two, and there you go, Kenneth, looking back. I never liked looking back. I always liked to think that was a sign of weakness, but we've seen that a lot more in marathon running now. It's it's less, it's more a gauge whether, oh, okay, I know what's happening in front of me, but what is happening behind? Is anyone catching, or is it just a race in two? And there you see Muriyama also having a look, and I think they've probably decided now, well, it's down to the two of us. Are we going to keep rolling, or is this going to be a tactical race where we wait for the sprint finish? And that's almost, like they're not talking, but that's the sense I get. They're saying, OK, let's help each other out, get away, make sure it comes down to just the two of us. It was interesting to see just then Moriyama when Mungara took over. He really eyeballed him. He started at his feet and then looked all the way up his body. We see Yuki Kawauchi. It's not to be Yuki's day, but as he always does, he's running tough. He certainly is, and we, we know that's the way he runs. And Jeff Eggleston just beside him there, who uh, ran 2.10 himself. So they've still got quality in that, in that group there. But uh, Yuki probably just working hard and would love to be up the front. And hopefully uh, he's having a, a, he can get that second wind and pick up a few runners on the way home. Kenyans through the 30k mark in 1 hour 42.32, so they're still under race record pace. The race record set last year by Ethiopia's Ababe Bakila, and they're looking well and truly under it, probably, oh gee, at least 30, 40 seconds at this point. And they're both looking great. I, I mean, Agnes Barsocia doesn't look like she's changed stride at all one bit since we could almost be, we're almost coming to the starting line. Looks like she's almost on that. She doesn't, hasn't changed or was giving us no sign of any fatigue there. So Kenyan ladies looking really strong. It really is cultural, isn't it? You can look across some sports like in soccer, you've got kids very young, they kick balls in the favelas and in cricket in India, you have them hitting the balls. In running for East Africans, it really is a way of life. Certainly, the Kenyans, it, 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 it is a way. You know, that's just their it's their national sport, and they know they're all heroes. A lot of the uh, marathon runners from Kenya, they're well known, and and there's a way of um, making your your name in Kenya is to be taking up that tough sport of marathon running. Not tough for Kenyans. They're looking like they're doing it very comfortably here. 
just over the 30 kilometre mark in the women's race at the Gold Coast Marathon and it's Ruth Chebatok. Is this a significant breakaway? Barsocio is second but there's a good 20 or so metres between them now, if not more, she's she's moving away. And just as I said how well Agnes was looking yeah. and uh, we've had that race break and again on that downhill which has obviously been the most significant part of the course and that could be a winning break by Chebatok tactical she knows what she's doing she wants to break her opponent yeah and um, we saw Jess there who just looks to be um, struggling but she'll get a good lift though when she goes through this area at the start finish line a lot of support out there and I'm sure she'll get a lift from um, the local local support that she's getting out on the course now Mona I'm going to test your cultural knowledge now back in 1946 there was an American musical Annie Get Your Gun can you remember one of the most famous songs from that oh uh, no, paint your wagon. No, I'm wrong. Mu <laughs> wrong musical. I think. <laughs> no. Anything you can do, I can do better, and that's what's happening in the marathon right now between Moriyama and Mangara. I better get better check the archives and get back and have a listen to that. But no, I want you to sing it. <laughs> you definitely don't want me to sing it. I tell you, James. But what's what's interesting is these two guys. They look so comfortable. They're really uh, on the top of at the top of their game. So we know Kenneth Mungara, but Muriyama's the story here. You know, 216 marathon runner who's rolling around at 2829 pace and looking so competent doing it. Happy to take the lead. They're happy to really continue this pace. So what are both of them thinking? What do you think? Thinking. I would be just sitting. Japanese have a history of running from the front. If I was Kenneth, I would be just sitting behind. And when Muriyama signals to go around and say, no, I'm, I'm right, I know I've got this. I've been here before. I can win. I'm turning now at 36K. We're in the home stretch. I'm going to let you do all the work. I'm, I know I'm backing myself in. I've been in this position before. So I wouldn't be doing any of the work if, if I was Kenneth. Yes, around the northernmost point of the course at the Gold Coast Marathon, around about, as you say, 36, 37 kilometres. Will it be a race in two? There's someone behind them. We can't pick him up here, but at this stage, it really is between Moriyama and Wungara. And that might be the reason they're keeping the pace going because they will have seen at that turnaround, you can see you double the distance, obviously. You look at a runner on the other side and they might have noticed that uh, there's a couple closing, but... It certainly looks like these two are running very strongly. Really, Muriam on his toes and really pushing off the roadway. He looks in um, great shape. Oh, how about that pacer? The pacer having a chat, a full-on chat with Chebatok at the moment. So she's obviously very, very comfortable. Yeah, Brad Croker there. He's obviously travelling pretty well. Yeah. He's, he's a competent Australian marathon runner, so we're not surprised. But um, he's smiling, having a good time. So he's doing a great job pacing there. A bit of a frown on Barsocio's face. She's hanging on for second, and we can tell you that her pace is dropping, so Jess Trengove has a chance of overhauling her if she maintains her rhythm. Right. And Brad Carlefeld there, uh, from a triathlete, who's having a great run as well, so he's uh, he's, in, he's in good shape running about 225. He'd be happy with that, I think, Brad. And this is interesting. We thought it was a race in two, but who is it? Joe Fakuda in third place. It's as though they've dropped him in with a parachute. And now do we have a race in three? Well, this is a real surprise. Having said they're full of running and rolling away, we have seen Joe Fakuda come from nowhere and caught them. So he's obviously running quicker than they are to be able to have caught him. I reckon he's caught 15 or 20 seconds from that turnaround. So, gee, now the question is, does he get on does he go round he you know interestingly he's been running faster than them so why would he just sit in keep that momentum going joe joe fakuda with a pb 215 11 so he's running well above his best as well joe fakuda kenneth mungara kento muriyama we have a race in three at the gold coast marathon the 40th edition of the gold coast marathon and we have a cracking finish in store and I'm telling you, you you plant me in here at, at this stage, Kenneth Mungar and two Japanese. I'm going Kawauchi and Noguchi, and it's neither of them. Can yep. you believe it? Joe Fukuda in the final stages has made up nearly 19 seconds to get where he is. This is where they're running to. It was seen of the swimming at the 2018 Commonwealth Games here on the Gold Coast. Who will win? We've seen Muriyama set the pace, but he looks to be dropping off Mona. Yeah, sure does. You know, this is a significant... You're not allowing a break like that at this point of the race, so I think Mariama's probably uh, given up the ghost. 
Oh, in fact, he doesn't. He's not travelling all that well. I think he's having a bit of trouble. Yes, he is. He's just in a bit of distress there. So his race is probably done. But how good does Kenneth Mungara look? Mungara looks to be taking the race away from Joe Fakuda. Not long to go. He has won twice here before, Kenneth Mungara, in 2015. In 2016, he was runner-up last year. And will he make it three wins? Joe Fakuda not giving up over his shoulder, though. Like last year, he's, uh, you never know. He obviously is aware that he needs to go a bit earlier and he's making this break now so it doesn't come to a, to a sprint finish. And he's learned his lesson from last year and that's a, that's a decisive break. So I think Kenneth's probably away. Looks like he's on his way to, his, to another strong victory. A slight look over his shoulder as he runs into the finishing compound. Kenneth Madgara, a decade ago, he would have been talking about clippers, scissors and buzz cuts, but forget the haircut this time. It's about headlines, and he knows how to write them here at the Gold Coast Marathon. This will be his third victory, Kenneth Mungara. But look at Muriyama Mona. Where's he come from? That's an amazing... Can we see an upset again? A sprint finish. Another Japanese comes home over the top of Mungara. Kento Muriyama giving it his all. He was in distress. We're into the last 150 metres. Kenneth Mungara, though, says, no way, sunshine. This is my event. I I own this event here on the Gold Coast, the 40th edition of the Gold Coast Marathon, and it's going to go the way of Kenya's barber, 44 years of age, Kenneth Mungara, onto the finishing mat now, only a matter of metres to go. It's going to be Kento Muriyama trying hard. What a finish this is going to be, and it is Mungara, 209. 49, Muriyama second, and the brave Fakuda third. What a race at the Gold Coast Marathon. Well done, Kenneth Mungara. Well, look at that. Only three seconds between the top three runners, Mona. Not a race record, but that is phenomenal running to have three under 210 and such an exciting finish. I mean, that could have gone into any of the three of them. Three seconds, can you believe it? Kenneth Mungara winning his third Gold Coast Marathon and he's also finished second here. Muriyama second, Fakuda third. The race himself is, was very good, fantastic. We enjoy a lot of the course. The people are shouting, chasing. So I decided they're shouting for me. Don't be behind, win the race. So they hope to motivate me. He is very happy, as will be Ruth Chebatok. She doesn't have far to go, and it looks as though she is going to beat the race record as well. Yeah, she is full of running. So we have, we finally had a Kenyan woman come here and uh, take that top spot on the dais. We've waited 40 years for it to happen. We thought it would have happened prior to now, but this is really fast running. So a phenomenal run by Ruth Chebatok. Only her shadow is keeping pace with the 27-year-old Kenyan Ruth Chebatok. Her previous best time, 2.25.49. She is going to smash that at the 40th edition of the Gold Coast Marathon. Ruth Chebatok making it home. Good times on the Gold Coast for Ruth Chebatok. We will see her again, I'm sure. And she is going to smash the record here. She is going to be the first woman to run under 2.25 in this race history. Let's look at the clock. 2.24.49. What a run and what a run. Mona, you can bring this lady home. Oh, and Jess Trengover, really big run. It's going to be a big personal best. Under, Hopefully under 2.27. Yep. 2.20. Well under 2.26.31. And that's a terrific run, Jess. 
just proving how strong, again, delivering as one of our greatest marathon runners. A terrific day. Well done, Jess Trengo. $40,000 bonus as part of the pool for finishing as an Australian under 228. And here comes third place, Agnes Barsocio. She's run tough over the final few kilometres. Her pace dropped off. Well done, Agnes Barsocio, as we celebrate a Kenyan winning this event for the first time. Ruth Chebatok, Gold Coast Marathon Women's Champion, 2 hours 24.49, the first time we've seen a woman go under 2.25 here. Race record, Jess Trengo, personal best, 2.26.31. Agnes Barsocio, 2.27.46. Celia Sullihan from Australia coming home in 2.30.19 to finish fifth in a leaders board otherwise dominated by Japanese runners. I'm happy because I am the winner. Second, I'm happy because I have a new PP and I have broke the course record from last year. It's a lot to thank my coach Adam Jennings for because a lot of people sort of thought, oh, you, you know, backing up pretty quickly after come games and Adam believed that I could do it and you know, he worked as a team and um, yeah, got what we were after today and I'm really pleased. <laughs> And what's wonderful about Jess Trengove, she has said she's going to donate some of her pool money to charity. So well done, Jess, as we see the runners continuing to come in as they will for a long time to come. Yeah, not only a great athlete, Jess Trengove, but a great Australian. What wonderful sights here on the Gold Coast for the 40th Gold Coast <laughs> Marathon. That bloke's got your six-pack, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He's a hulk of a man. Well, for some, for some of them, it is the end of months and months of training. Personal BBs, looking for dreams. Let's hear from some of them. Yeah, awesome, mate. Awesome conditions, awesome crowd, awesome course. Just perfect. Couldn't have a, more, a better, a more a funner day out there running. Yeah, it's great. I love it. That's why I keep coming back. I keep doing PBs here and I'm 56, so... <laughs> amazing, amazing weather. Perfect. Yeah, I'm happy. But uh, perfect conditions down the Gold Coast, and the Gold Coast always put, put together a really great event, so super great effort. Lots of smiles and no doubt a few cramps along the way. The race began way back in 1979, Mona, and it just gets better and better here at the Gold Coast. Sure does. Some big runs today, mate of mine, Russ Jenkins on there, running personal best today. Lots of personal best and lots of family stories. Look at that. What a moment, a moment to treasure. To finish is to win it. Thank you for your company, Steve Monaghetti. It has indeed been a cracker. Oh, it's been a delight. Thanks, James. We'll see you next year for the 41st Gold Coast Marathon.